One of the most common questions that we hear is, can I tune my old piano? Today, Ted and I discuss the dangers and the benefits of tuning an old piano. Let's check it out. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in beautiful downtown San Antonio, Texas. And I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channels, check out our other videos, sign up for notifications, like our videos, leave us comments. We really appreciate your support and we love to interact with you guys. Well, Ted, this is a question we get all the time. And it's, it's interesting because it's a loaded question and we are a piano music store. And so we always lead with the caution, Correct. Um, which it, it, so it could be seen as a sales pitch. Um, and, and honestly, if your piano is severely out of tune, there's probably something wrong with it that doesn't have to do with the tuning. Um, and so we, we, a lot of the times you'll, you'll contact your local uh, tuner, um, a piano technician, or you'll contact your local music store, um, which I think is the right move. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a complicated question that a lot of the times I think of it as going to the doctor and saying, I, I have a headache. Right. Uh, and the doctor goes, well, how, is, how, how long have you had it? Uh, there's all these questions because it could be something as severe as a, as a brain injury. It could be major or minor. It could be yeah, major. Ooh, it's musical. That was a bad joke. <laughs> that was a bad joke, but I love it. It could be major or minor, of course. And so, and so I think the same thing applies here in the piano world. Um, and I, th I think it's interesting because uh, what's, what do we hear all the time? We hear, I got this piano. I got this piano from someone who got it from someone, and it used to be theirs, and that's who I played with. And so it could be any combination of aunt, mom, grandmother, friend, older relative, neighbor, friend, neighbor. The, the previous house owner. Right. Um, and so it's, it's, and this piano could be 100 years old. It could be older than the oldest person on the planet, and you could have no idea if you didn't do a little research. It could be beautiful, too. Um, a, a lot of the times we talked about older pianos, the, the, car, the cabinetry, cabinetry is so beautiful because it's made by these furniture producers um, especially back in the day they would spend a lot of time making it a beautiful piano but at the same time if this piano is severely out of tune what could it, what could that implicate it could implicate a lot of things and the first thing it implicates is the one thing is the most common problem of every piano that's an acoustic instrument that you come across they're all they're built to last for a reason because in that long time that they're there, they're going to suffer, not abuse. Some of them do, like barroom pianos, but neglect. Mm -hmm. In other words, people just don't pay attention to the piano. And I haven't had it tuned in a few years. And so then when you hear it, it's like, it's been more like a few decades. Mm -hmm. And because all you hear is wavering. And yeah, it's noise and it's carnival sounding and it's all out of tune. And you cannot tell the finer points of that piano. And in other words, you can't tell that it's got upgraded wool hammers or it's got this kind of action or this kind of string or this kind of soundboard because it all just sounds like wavering and there's nothing in there. In order to get it focused, you got to get it tuned. And so, like you said, we get a lot of phone calls here all the time. Uh, I have an old piano and I don't know what to do with it. I need someone to look at it because it's got some broke things. And uh, the first thing you start is send a tuner out. Yeah, and, and when we and when we talked about the, the concept for this video, I, you know, we were discussing this and it was, can I tune this old piano if it's 20 years old, if it's 50 years old? And you're like, the well, first thing you said... the first thing I said is, don't do it yourself. <laughs> I, I think before that you said it's a good place to start. It's a good place to start. Which is which is interesting because it is, it's twofold. It's, it's a good place to start to get someone else to come look at your instrument. Um, we, how many times do we get questions about, can I buy a, a, a tuning hammer? A tuning hammer, because, well, my piano's out of tune and I tune a guitar, I can tune a piano. It's sitting in my storage container in, in, in an, an untemperature regulated uh, and, storage and, you know, container. He told me he was retired, he had nothing but time on his hands, he got the internet, he's smart, he can learn, he's an engineer, and, I, and uh, I didn't quite know how to explain to him. I said, why don't you just hire a tuner first and watch him do the work? And he said, what do you say? I said, do you ever work on cars? He says, yeah. I said, do you remember when you had to not just gap and tune the plugs, but you had to adjust the distributor with the timing chain so that it's firing right? That's perfectly tuning an engine. Okay, and you had what, six, eight cylinders? He goes, yeah, about 226 on a piano. It's like tuning a car with 226 pistons in it. 
it's not going to happen. And it doesn't happen perfection. equally. It, it'll never happen to perfection. That's why you get a professional tuner. He gets it as close to mathematical perfection as you want. Mathematical perfection doesn't sound perfect either. It doesn't. It's got to have rounded edges. So it's, it's interesting because this is... Uh, it's the most common issue you hear in a piano. It's out of tune. Hey, if it's the most and beautiful and expensive, perfectly manufactured piano in the world, if it's way out of tune or out of tune, it's... It's no fun. It's no fun. It's, it's, a, it's a big eyesore. Um, and so uh, it's interesting that because of this question, people assume the value of the instrument. And like you said, it could be the most expensive instrument in the entire world. And if it's out of tune, you'll never know. Um, and so we highly recommend calling a technician. Um, it, it will be a perfect uh, relationship um, because if you're looking at, at piano as a long-term investment for yourself or for your kids, um, getting to know a tuner is, is one of the best. It's like having a teacher. Um, it's gonna someone who can look after the lifelong journey you have of that instrument um, and be making sure that everything's working. Because like you said, it's like a car, it's a tune up. It's making sure that not only is the piano in tune, but all the mechanics are working, all the mechanisms are working inside. Well, now that's where the, the, the tuning, the, the process of tuning a piano comes into play because for the most part, you've got 88 keys mm -hmm. and you're gonna have somewhere around 12 to 15 that are gonna be single strung, maybe even less and you're gonna have about 20 to 24 that are gonna be double strung. And then the rest are all triple strung. And what that means is when you hit one note, there's three strings that have to have the exact same amount of tension force so that they all move in unison. And that's one note. Generally in out of tune pianos, they're all moving different. So you're getting three different waverings off of one key. And when you play a three note chord and two notes in a bass, mm -hmm. well then you've got you know, a bunch of notes that are all wavering out of tune and all the strings are not, there's none of them going in unison. Mm -hmm. Even the octaves aren't going in unison. And like I said, if it's the most beautiful made, perfectly manufactured piano, it's not gonna sound good if it's not tuned. And even a clunky old piano that's in tune, you can play it long enough to find out this key needs more padding underneath. And a technician will do that because he just doesn't tune it instantly. It takes him a number of hits. I'm saying probably each key, on average, a tuner may hit what anywhere from 15 to 23 times to mm -hmm. get to get all those strings, and he's only getting that one string because they go one at a time, and then they add all the other ones up. So it, it is time consuming, but the process involves using the dampers and using the action and using the hammer and just keep playing each key monotonously over and over until it's pulled into pitch or as close as he can get it. Uh, if it's been out of tune for any more than a decade, it may need a, two tunings, one to at least get it close to pitch or up the pitch, and then it may slip down and then bring a it back raise, up. Yeah. Uh, a pitch raise. And a lot of times those pitch raises won't take on a much, much older piano. And I'm talking one that, that may be like from the 70s or 60s or one that's been stored in a garage where the, the wood has swelled and... and, yeah. and well, I was going to talk about that because it's, it's interesting because you can get a piano tuned, an older piano, but after a couple of tunings, the, t the technician might come back to you and say, this piano can't be tuned. And you're like, well, what did I pay you for the last two times? And, it, and it's, uh, it's that the, the actual functionality of taking a tuning hammer and tuning the strings and maybe getting it close to in tune is possible, but that next step of does it hold a tune? Well, then, see, now this is the thing that... Um... The first people to complain about a piano that won't hold a tune, uh, that hold a tune are generally the churches mm -hmm. because a lot of times they put on their HVAC, their heat, their air on Sundays and Wednesdays. And turn it off for the rest of the Except week. Except when the tuner comes in on Thursdays, you know, I had to work in the sweat. Well, he goes in there, he works in the sweat and he tunes the piano and that's great. The minute they turn the air conditioning on for weekend services, that piano's out of tune. Yeah, and it's interesting because these, these if you know anything about pianos, you've heard of a pin block, and a pin block holds your pins, which holds your strings. Um, and so the pin block is actually, it's a lot like a violin headstock. If you've seen a violin headstock, it's all done through friction. Um, and the pin is sitting in a, in a piece of wood, a, a layered pieces of wood, um, but it's just friction um, that's holding the string there. And if that wood even swells um, or, or dries out or anything, the, the wood in the pin will not hold as sturdy, right. which will affect the tuning stability of it. Um, and when you have however many strings are in a piano all together going at the same time, uh, it's a lot of 
pool. A lot of pool. Um, and it, your whole piano could, could, if it's not stored correctly or if it's not taken care of correctly, um, can become an unusable item very quickly. Um, and yeah, you, you see it with churches, you see it when people move and they put their piano in a storage facility for an extended amount of time. Um, there's just these dangers of the older piano right. not holding a tune. So right. it can be tuned, but it won't hold a tune. And a lot of times, you know, we've seen so many older used pianos through here and you'll get something in here that is just uh, looks horrible, but then it cleans up great and it tunes great and it holds its tune. Mm -hmm. And so those are pianos that still have a lot of life left in them. Every now and then you'll get one that, that you'll tune and by the time the guy's done tuning, there'll be a section that's out. And that's one thing I do want to say about pin blocks. I've never seen a pin block completely go. I've seen the base section go where it's split mm -hmm. and it split from the single up to the double strings and on both a grand and on, on an upright. And then I've seen this section right in here that slips a lot on uprights. And what that means is there's just one section of that pin block and it's generally the section that gets tuned a lot and it's mm -hmm. an octave up above over middle C where a lot of melodies are played, even on, for beginner level. I'm not saying it's from excessive use. It just seems that that section is the harder section because there's usually a, a, a break in the, in the bridge. And uh, it just, it's not on the end and it's not in the middle, it's just a section. So you have sections of a pin block that may go out. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be from anything. Uh, a lot of people and, used to, ah, it could just, you know, fish tank leaked right there on that one spot mm -hmm. and it swelled up and then it shrunk and all the pins started coming out. Yeah, so it's 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 a loaded question. It is a loaded because question. Because if the pin block is bad, what happens with the piano? It, the piano right. is usually not worth fixing at that it, point. It's not because it's just, unless you want something that sounds horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they, you know, with, with the wavering, there there is a, a point to where you can't even distinguish that it's a piano sound. I mean, it sometimes it just sounds like uh, I don't know, someone throwing a dulcimer or something. Yeah. Well, and so and so I think it's it's uh, it's definitely something that you want to get a technician involved with as soon as possible, and with a tuner involved as soon as possible, because right. for the most part, the answer is yes, the piano can be tuned, uh, but the longer term effects and why it's out of tune are really questions that you want to figure out the answer to. And you'll as never soon as know, right? And you'll never know, is everything working right? Is the piano functioning properly? Uh, are the, is the wool any good or the felts worn mm -hmm. out? You'll never know that until you get a technician out there who attempts to tune it to try to get it back into service and to say, you know what, this piano will hold the tune fine, but you're going to need, not me, sometimes it's not the tuner, mm -hmm. a guy to come in and fix up these keys. Yeah. And someone to fix up uh, your trap work because you're missing the rods or something. So it's, it, I mean, we would say it's definitely worth the investment of getting someone out oh, there. Oh, absolutely. It's probably going to cost you somewhere between $100 to $200 um, to get a tuner out there and say, I want it tuned. Uh, but then they'll probably uncover some other stuff if it's something that hasn't been taken care of um, or is, is you don't know the extensive history of the right. instrument. Um, if it's been longer than 15, 20 years and it's been, even if it's just been sitting in your house for 20 years, it might need. Um, a couple pitch raises and it might need, um, you know, just some small stuff, some keys might be sticking. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's highly important to get someone who knows what they're looking for there. Um, and I, we would strongly recommend not trying to tune it yourself. Um, that we've only horror, heard right. horror stories horror because stories. It, it's uh, you're going to snap a string. You're going to, it's just, it's going to be a nightmare. And it's in the highly trained technicians still sometimes don't, mess up when they're tuning and it's just no. it's, it, it, and it's not it's just a, it takes about a good couple of hours to get it tuned it mm -hmm. does take some patience um i think piano tuners are some of the most patient people in the world because they have to listen to the same note over and over and over if you have someone come into your home and tune a piano uh it you kind of have to get away from them and, and <laughs> oh, drive it, you crazy. it gets annoying but the one thing i do want to say as, as an aside to the tuning is if you've had this piano in your home or if it's been in someone's home that you're familiar with and it's been out of tune and someone tunes it, the first thing you will notice before you even notice that it's in tune is when you sit down to play it or someone sits down to play it for you is that the piano is going to be about two to three times louder than it used to be. And when you get all those strings in unison, well, then they, the, the volume gets focused and then all the notes get, get focused and then the volume naturally comes up. Mm -hmm. The instrument actually amplifies and projects the tones that it's supposed to in the right way. And it's because those 
there you have a lot more unison in the string tensions yeah from note to note and the volume can go up two to three times as much and that is a surprising thing in the volume because the minute you touch a note and it's real loud it's like whoa i need to change my playing oh, yeah no it sounds great well thank you guys for watching again if you have any questions about can my piano be tuned is it worth it uh, I would recommend contacting your local music store or contacting us. Um, we can answer a lot of your questions and we can also recommend technicians in your area. Um, Ted, thank you again for being here today. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please do. We really appreciate your support. Leave us some comments. Let us know if you've had a horror story with a tuned piano or an untuned piano. Um, it can, it's a very interesting journey for a lot of people to get an old piano up to spec. Um, so let us know your experience and if you've had any, any uh, revealing things happen to you. So thank you guys for watching.